So growing up, I was told the story of how my great-grandparents came to America. And the story I was told was that my great-grandfather was bottom class and he cut off his queue, which was a hairstyle that was mandated to have. And in fear of uh, getting executed, he left to America and started working at a restaurant. And that my great-grandma was royalty, high class, their family owned a castle. and when the, uh, the revolution came and the, the dynasty that she was a part of was overtaken, she had to escape as well, and they started working at the same restaurant. I was really drawn to this story because of the fantastical nature to it. It sounded like a fairy tale. The, the notion of two people from such different classes rebelling to marry each other. It was very Romeo and Juliet. So the, the original story that I heard from was from my uncle, but I wanted to hear it from someone who was actually there and alive during that time, my great aunt, uh, Virginia Mosheng. I reached out to my, my Aunt Jenny uh, with an email asking her questions about the things that I didn't know about their story, and she sent me a very thorough letter that answered about all of my questions. My dad came from an area in China called Zhongshun. It is a district within the state of Guangzhou. The George Washington of China was born in Zhongshun. Dr. Sun Yat-sen was the founding father of the Republic of China. At that time, China was ruled by an emperor. Dr. Sun was a revolutionary and wanted to overthrow the emperor and establish a republic. My mother, Yi Chu Wan, was born in the 1890s to a higher status family. One of the biggest takeaways from learning about the class system in China was that it wasn't based off of status or wealth or anything that was common in Europe's social structures. It was based off of education and it was based off of a test that you had to take and if you passed that test, then you were considered of higher class. And if you didn't, then you stayed in this lower working class. So it did lead to wealth, but the whole system isn't based off of wealth. It's based off of education. My mother lost her mother at a young age. Her father emigrated to Australia, so he was seldom home. She grew up in her uncle's house. She was well treated, but because she didn't have parents, she felt orphaned. My uncle was a kind man who didn't force her to bind her feet. As a young woman, she was married through an arranged marriage. Her husband emigrated to America shortly after the marriage ceremony. Mom lived with her husband's family. After eight years, she never received any word from him. Her male cousins told her about a diplomat who would be traveling to America. They were looking for a young woman who would be a nanny to their two young children. My mother wanted to leave her in-law's house to travel to America. She was determined to look for her husband. I believe she watched her own mom suffer through a lonely marriage waiting for a husband who did not return. My mom decided that she would not relive her mother's life, so she traveled with the diplomat's family to the United States. My father, Shang Mao, was born in the 1890s to a lower status family. During the Qing Dynasty, all men in China were required to wear their hair in a long queue. My dad wanted to be a modern man and cut off his queue. Men who did this showed that they were rebelling against the emperor. Dad had to leave China in order not to be caught by the emperor's guards. If he did not leave China, he would endanger his whole family. He fled to Hong Kong, which was a British colony. In Hong Kong, he signed on a British ship and worked on the ship. 
he learned English and spent time in England. When his ship came to New York, Dad stayed. Despite being from the same district during the same time period, my parents had never met before due to their social statuses. But now they were both in America and their statuses had changed. My mother arrived in New York with the hopes of finding her husband. She found her husband who was married to another woman and had four children. My mother signed a divorce agreement with her husband. She felt that she could not return to China as now she could not return to her in-law's house. She decided to stay in America and try to be independent. When arriving in Chinatown, my great-grandmother started working at the Namwa Tea Parlor. The Namwa Tea Parlor has been around since the 1920s. That's actually when it was opened. And it's still a functioning business today. It's one of the oldest restaurants in Chinatown. The Namwa Tea Parlor is actually located in Doyer Street. It's called the Bloody Angle. The Bloody Angle got its name for two reasons. It was a small road that was bent at a 90 degree angle, and it was one of the deadliest streets in America. In the early 1900, two major gangs were battling for control in Chinatown. This began in 1905 and continued to be home to many gangs before finally becoming safe in the 1990s. But it happened so that the gangs died down right around the time that my great-grandmother came and started working there. My great-grandmother worked at the Namwa Tea Parlor through the 1920s, and during this time period, it, it was a social hub, and my great-grandfather was a patron of the restaurant, and that's how they met. I always thought that my mom was extremely courageous. She did not know English. She knew nothing about America. She still ventured forth into this great unknown and took a great risk. It was here in Chinatown where my parents married and started a family. My sister and I were born in the years of the Great Depression, so everyone was poor. We lived in a walk-up tenement on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. All our neighbors were immigrants. Most neighbors did not speak English. However, we understood each other and were always helpful to each other. On Friday nights, the Sabbath, our Jewish neighbors always asked us to put out the lights for them. We were poor, we had no toys. My mom created toys with a piece of paper, origami, or a piece of string, cat's cradle. We were very happy and did not realize that we were poor. By then the economy improved and our family lived in an apartment above our mama and papa Chinese restaurant. The four of us, Helen, Tom, Ed, and myself always had great fun. We made up games and played amongst ourselves. My best friends were my sister and brothers. One of the people that I reached out to to learn more about the story was my mom, uh, Elizabeth Mosheng, and she was able to tell me at least what she was told by her, her father, even if that wasn't 100% the full story. So, my father had three older sisters, my Aunt Helen, my Aunt Ginny, and then he also had an older sister named Elizabeth. When she was very young, she was quite sick, and the family couldn't afford to take care of her, and so there was a wealthy Chinese couple who adopted her, and that's who I was actually named after. My dad was the next one, and then he had a younger brother, my Uncle Eddie. My mom and dad were very hardworking. They opened their restaurant at 6 Mott Street in Chinatown, New York. They named it the Canton Restaurant. The restaurant was open for seven days and my parents did not have a single day off. They cooked everything themselves and made everything themselves. My parents were very intelligent people. They opened a restaurant because during the depression they could not find work. They were very industrious and were able to manage this small business with four other employees. My mom was quite petite. She had a lovely manner and was very refined. She made all her own clothes. She also made our clothes. 
My mom was well loved because she made people feel comfortable and happy. My dad was 5'11 and very debonair. He dressed well. All his suits came from a fine clothier, Rogers Pete. I believed that my parents were very courageous and resourceful. They did not know what America was like, but they were willing to venture out. They opened a restaurant, not having had any experience in the restaurant business. They built a thriving business which supported a family of six. Although they were poor and had limited formal education, they had the will and the grit to succeed. In the late 1940s, my dad bought a restaurant in Charlotte, North Carolina. We moved there briefly. It was during the days of segregation and, as we were Asians, we found ourselves questioning the separation of people. Water fountains, public bathrooms, recreation areas were all designated white or color. If one got on a bus, white people sat in the front, colored people sat in the back. I never knew where I belonged. Our family was not happy in North Carolina and returned to New York City. My parents started the restaurant in order to put food on the table. Both my parents frequently told us, do not go into the restaurant business. It is very hard work. We want you to study hard and achieve. Do well in school and you will not have to suffer menial labor. This was frequently drummed into our heads. Study, work hard, do well in school. Do not do what we have to do. Reach your own potential. Achieve your goals. You must go to college. I guess that is why my sister Helen became an aerospace engineer. I, a secondary school teacher, Tom, a doctor, and Ed, an engineer. So coming over from China, being immigrants in the United States, and then working hard to own a business, have a restaurant, they had high expectations for their children to succeed in life and to live the American dream. And they all really did. My dad, you know, went to New York City public school, PS whatever, in Chinatown growing up, but he went to Columbia. Not only that, he was a world famous pediatric endocrinologist and he was very well known. So I grew up being told basically you could be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Those were pretty much the options that were afforded to me. Nothing else was going to be okay. So growing up, I felt like I was the mistake of the family, like I was going to be the one who really messed up the legacy. I had wanted to be a filmmaker. By learning more about this story, I got to learn why education was so important. I and mean, it's not just you should become rich, it's that we don't want you to suffer the hard labor that we had to go through. It's more of a, they want you to be happy and successful and comfortable. Like my great grandparents didn't have the option to be. And I feel comfortable becoming who I wanna become. And I think that they'll support me on that.